Hello and welcome to our service today. I want to bid you a very warm welcome, whoever you are, wherever you are, and whenever you are watching this. You are welcome to church. If you're watching at the 12 o'clock service or if you're watching together with other people, please take a moment just to, to turn around and say you are welcome and welcome them to church. As strange maybe as that might be in your front room or wherever you are, but turn around to, to those about you or type in on the browser and say hello and welcome to church. Today in our service, we continue on our series in the Apostles' Creed. And we're looking at the, the next section. We've had, I believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth. And we've got to maker of heaven and earth or creator of heaven and earth, depending on which translation and version of the creed we use. And so let's start off with a reminder of who God is and what he does in Psalm 24. And it says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Let's come before God. Let's sing. We're going to sing a, a song about creation that speaks of Jesus as the word of God the Father, the one who created everything. This strange process that there is in creation that... Um, that God the Father is, of course, the, the creator, but he creates everything through Jesus, this wonderful mystery in the, the Trinity that through his word, through Jesus, he creates all things. Let's sing about that. So in our service, we are in our services over the last while, we've been looking at the Apostles' Creed. So we started last week and we're going to continue on um, all the way up to and past Easter as we deal with the, the Easter sections of the Creed as well. And so let's hear the Creed and it's going to be read for us today by Eleanor. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So thank you, Eleanor, for reading the Apostles' Creed for us there. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, you're the creator of all things. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. You are the one who founded it and established it. Lord God, whenever we say that the earth is yours and everything in it, it is such a, a strange idea. It takes us so long for that to really sink into our hearts and minds, to really totally understand what that means, that, that not only are all the things we touch and see yours, but that we are yours. We belong to you. As another Sam says, we are your people the sheep of your pasture. Lord God, we thank you that you made us and you look upon your workmanship and you look upon it with love and pride and joy. That we are yours. That you created us. And on the one level, that feels so beautiful. And on another level, sometimes it's, it's terrifying to think that our very being, our next breath, our existence depends upon you. Because, Lord, the silly thing about us is that we pretend that we are so independent, that we look after ourselves that we are so strong that we don't need anybody. And Lord, that foolish independence, as opposed to healthy independence, leads to great sin. Because we pretend that we don't need other people, we, we treat them badly. We are ungrateful. We are ungrateful to them and we are ungrateful to you. Because we pretend that we are independent, we don't follow your ways or your rules. And Lord, we end up going off down dark pathways within ourselves. And Lord God, we sin against you and against others. We see your good laws and we know them and we choose different routes that bring us into harm and hurt and difficulty. Lord God, we pray for forgiveness for the ways in which we have set ourselves on the throne of our lives and tried to kick you off, tried to push you to the edges, tried to state our independence of you. Whenever you are our maker, you are our creator, you are the wonderful artist who shaped and formed us. Lord, forgive us for these things. Forgive us for the idolatry that comes between us and you, this idolatry of ourselves. Lord Jesus, you made us, you formed us, and yet you did not consider it too much to come and become one of us, to lower yourself to being a human being, blessing us with your holy presence here on earth, but above and beyond that, Lord Jesus, you became one of us in our death as well as in our life. 
And in that death, you took upon yourself our death, our sins, our wrongdoing, all of the things that meant that we were separated from you and from the Father and from the Holy Spirit. And Lord Jesus, you did that so that taking those things upon you, you might die with them. And you might then be able to declare us innocent, that our debt was paid, that our guilt was gone, that all of the wrongdoing that we have ever done and said and thought was placed upon you. And so we can be declared free. We can be declared innocent. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for the blessing of that. Lord, we pray that today we would know your grace, we would know your forgiveness. And Lord, that in all we do, we would acknowledge our dependence upon you, that our next breath, our next heartbeat, all of our life comes from you. And we pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let's hear again from God's Word. And we are reading now from a strange book that we might think of whenever it comes to creation. When you think of creation, we might be thinking about the, the very first book in the Bible. But creation is mentioned throughout the Bible, and there are various kinds of creation stories throughout the Scriptures, not just the, the first two that are, that are found in the, the book of Genesis. We find them in the Psalms. We find them in the, the book of Isaiah. We find it here then, right at the very end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation. John, it seems, brings us two creation stories, the one at the very start of, the, of John's Gospel, and then a story about creation here, or a song about creation. John has been brought up into the heavens, and he's seen the, the throne of God, and he says this, In the center round the throne were four living creatures. They were covered with eyes in front and behind. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was flying like an eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all round, even under its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading of his word. Let's again come before God in prayer. Let's bring to him our prayers for ourselves and others. Let's bring to him our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers of intercession, and let us pray. Lord God, as we consider you as creator of the world, we want to take a moment to, to give thanks for creation. And over the last few days, it has been easy in some ways to give thanks for creation with the beautiful sunlight, with those moments of spring going on around our world, to be able to, to see the springtime coming back, the days lengthening. And Lord, we thank you for those moments of awakening and joy that come from your creation. We thank you for the beauty that we see in the trees and in the flowers, that we hear in the bird song, that we witness with the glory of a sunset or just the majesty of a landscape. You are the greatest artist. 
For you not only created this beautiful world that all artists love and adore, but Lord, you created the very artists themselves to be able to see the beauty of your world. And Lord, we thank you for the beauty that surrounds us. We thank you for the beauty in each and every human being. Lord, sometimes we look at ourselves and we think that we look ugly or we're not quite right or we're not shaped right or all sorts of different things about us that we don't like. And yet you look upon us with love. And we are, each and every one of us, your beautiful creation. Lord, where we feel down, where we are unable to appreciate the wonders of your creation, Lord, we pray that you would come alongside us, that you would pick us up, that you would help us. Lord God, where we are too ill to be able to appreciate the beauty of your creation, we pray for your healing. And Lord, where illness weighs us down, we pray that you would draw close with your healing power. Lord, where worries about other people and their health weigh us down, we pray that you would come with your peace. And Lord, we pray for healing for them. And we pray that you would bring your comfort and your strength. Today, Lord, we pray for parts of the world where there is no hope, for places ravaged by war and starvation. And Lord God, we pray in particular for the land of Yemen. Lord, there injustice has been done. Stronger nations have attacked weaker nations and brought about famine and hardship. Lord God, we pray for forgiveness for those who have wrought havoc on that country. But we pray, Lord, that you would break their hearts, help them see what they have done, and turn them into peacemakers instead of war makers. Lord God, we pray for the children of Yemen that they would have enough food, we pray for the families there that they might be able to be safe. Well, Lord, we pray for good leadership that includes everyone in that country. And Lord God, above all, we pray for justice and peace. Lord, there are so many circumstances in which we need your peace in this world. And we pray for families that are broken. We pray for communities that need healing. We pray for churches that are fighting one another instead of sharing together with one another. And Lord, in all of these things, we pray for your blessing. And we ask all this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Let's sing an old song about creation, one that I'm sure many of us know well. I kind of have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this thing, so I do. Some of it I really like, and some of it it's, mm, I don't know. It all depends on how it's sung and who's singing it, so apologies if I do one of those bad versions of it. But this is, How Great Thy Art, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works your hand has made. Then 
sings my soul, my Savior God to be. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to be. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, and when I think that God is Son of Sparing, him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died, to take away my sin, then sings my soul, my Savior God to be. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, when Christ shall come with shout of Let's again come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would take these words that have been prepared and that you would take the meditations of our hearts and minds and make them acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's open our Bibles at Revelation chapter 4. And let's consider this next part of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. The elders lay their crowns before the throne, and they say, You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created, and have their being. Mm -hmm. 
John Stott, upon whom a lot of this sermon series is based, talks about three different types of creating. He talks about three different ways that creation takes place. He talks about begetting, procreation, whenever one thing makes something like it from itself. Whenever two human beings get together and they, they make a baby. Whenever animals get together and make a baby. Whenever a plant grows shoots out from itself or the flowers um, work together to, to make seeds. And there's all sorts of different and magical and, and wonderful ways in which this begetting takes place. And one thing creates something that is very like itself, a copy of itself, or maybe a development of itself. Among the animals and among humans, there are all sorts of little differences and variation that come in. Among the plants and sometimes among the, the lizards and uh, the various other kind of creatures that, um, that recreate themselves in, in different ways, there can be an exact copy, almost a kind of a clone, if you like, of the, the creature that is made. And that's the first one that he says is begetting. The second one that he talks about is manufacture. And whenever he was preaching, he used the example of the pulpit that he had in front of him. And somebody goes and starts with materials and they, they work with the, the work of their hands and they shape and they create and they build and they put together. And some of these things are beautiful to see. Whenever someone makes uh, something with like, you know, like this pulpit made out of, you know, really nice wood, beautifully shaped, it could do with being better looked after and things like that, uh, I guess, from the look of it. But whenever something like this is made and, and shaped in a, in a beautiful way, it is a wonderful thing. And it can be a great thing to see this happen, to see somebody sculpt and shape and form something. Particularly if it's something, well, this is to my own taste, particularly if it's something that is both beautiful and practical at the same time. One of my favorite places to go around, and, and you can't do that during lockdown now, um, during the, the whole virus thing, is to go around Ikea. Uh, I love going in and out of the, the different rooms in Ikea, and it's great because it, it you know, kind of satisfies that really nosy part of me because it feels like you're sitting in somebody else's room and you can actively just go around and nosy about and, and touch the furniture and see what there is and, and look about the place. And it's a, a thing that you just couldn't do in somebody else's house if it was a real house because it would be rude to be kind of rooting about the place and, and looking and being nosy like that. But in somewhere like Ikea, you can go and do that. Other furniture shops are available, but not ones where you can go and sit and, and look around in little made-up rooms like that. And I love looking at the design that there is in these things that, that are in there, because some of the design is just wonderful. You know, something that is both practical and beautiful at the same time. Kind of makes me a little bit sad that in, in many ways we have lost that kind of beautiful practicality. We have out in our shed, and if anybody wants one of them, they can uh, ask us and we'll drop it off to them, um, a couple of beautiful old sewing machines that we were using at one point um, here in the church during one of the, the refugee programs. And, and they haven't yet found a home, so if you want one, get in contact with me and we can send it down to you. But it's a hand-operated Singer sewing machine. And it is a beautiful machine made over in Singer in Scotland, um, just out to the, the west of Glasgow. And it is something that is both practical and beautiful. It's very practical in that it's a solid, almost kind of, I think, a hundred year old thing that still works beautifully. And yet it has things like this beautiful little side plate on it that is purely decorative. It is there for no other reason than to make it a beautiful work of art, a beautiful little machine to be able to, to work with and to be able to work from. And that is manufacture. And the third type of creating is the type that 
that God does. Creating from nothing. Imagining the worlds. Imagining us. Imagining us into being and creating us in all of our forms and ways. And that's a bit disturbing and and maybe actually a little bit frightening to think that, that we are the imagination of God. The imagination of human beings, if it's just still up in here and hasn't been worked on to to some other format, is something that is ethereal, is forgotten. You could come up with the the plot of the greatest play ever written, and tomorrow, you'd forget it. Indeed, in the introduction to some of Coleridge's poems, he speaks about the fact that he came up with a great poem yesterday, but then he took too many drugs and, and he forgot it. Our human imagination is so fleeting and drifting. And yet, God's imagination is solid. God's imagination is tangible. It is here. It is this stuff. God has created us out of nothing. And we might say to ourselves, well, what a weird and fanciful idea. How could we ever think of somebody creating things out of nothing. Such a, in a sense, a weird and fanciful idea that some of the philosophers, Aristotle, for example, said that that is impossible, that something cannot come out of nothing. He clearly hadn't ever experienced quantum physics and didn't know anything about that, Um, but then not too many people do, and I don't really know very much about it, but it does talk about the idea of things coming out of what appear to be nothing. But Aristotle said that this was an impossibility. And indeed, many people then took that as, as truth for a long time. And yet, whenever you think of something like a, a beautiful novel, you know, particularly a, a work of fantasy literature, think of the likes of the worlds created by J.R.R. Tolkien. Think of the world's created by, okay, Clark's an atheist, but you know, the likes of Arthur C. Clarke. Think of the the soaring heights of imagination of great authors. Think of characters in, in novels by Dickens or Jane Austen. And we, we think of them as real people. People have opinions about what they think about Mr. Darcy. People have opinions about what they think about Macbeth. And I know Macbeth is based on a historical person, but very, very loosely indeed. He's really an imaginary character. And these were characters that that didn't exist anywhere until Shakespeare began to write, until Jane Austen began to write, until J.K. Rowling or other people like that began to write. And there are people who are utterly in love with characters like Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, Ron Weasley. You know, we we love these characters. We love what we know about them, what we learn about them. I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. And I remember going along to the, the Harry Potter exhibition. This is a slightly embarrassing story here. And whenever I went into the, the, one of the, the rooms in the, the Harry Potter ex- exhibition um, over in London, there was this recreation of Dumbledore's study. And it felt very emotional to, to be there as a huge Harry Potter fan. It felt very emotional to be just kind of walk in and, and look around this place because this set that was so beautiful and so lovingly and lusciously created, um, lavishly created, it, it looked so realistic. And so to, to walk into this place was such a beautiful experience. Human beings, creatures made in the image of God, have this wonderful ability that God also has, and that comes from God. To be able to create, as in the old words, ex nihilo, out of nothing. To be able to imagine people, to be able to imagine characters, to be able to imagine worlds and settings and places. And this is the kind of creation that God does. 
It says here, you created all things. By your will, they were created and have their being. Not only does he create, but he sustains the world as well. By your will, they were created. And they continue to be. They, they have their being. They have their existence because you, God, hold them in existence. You, God, continue to know them, continue to keep them in existence. The wonder of this is almost beyond us to understand. The idea that God has created the whole world, and that might be okay. We can maybe grasp that, that God created the flowers and the trees and the rocks and the continents and the seas, but that God created us. Have you ever sat down after a moment of creation? Maybe you've drawn something, and it's the first time that you've ever drawn something and it kind of looked the part, and you thought, wow, that's, that's good. Maybe you have written down some words. You've given a, a speech to somebody, or you've written a poem, and you thought, actually, do you know what? That, that doesn't sound too bad. Maybe you have made up a little tune, or you've sung a song, or you've created a song for yourself, and you come to the end of it and you think, okay, that, that sounds okay, that's a bit catchy. So it is, I quite like that. And you look at this, this moment of creation, and you think, that's good. Now, I know in our Irish culture, I know that in our Irish society, and, and Britain's a bit like this as well, um, and some other cultures in the world are like this, we, we are so trained into to looking at our own creations, going, well, it's, it's not great, you know, it could be better. Um, you know, really, I didn't do very well at that. And we're used to this kind of humility where we're kind of you know, like, oh, I'm so terrible and I'm so bad and it's not good. But inside sometimes, don't we have these moments where we think, that was good. I like that. Well, do you know what? When God made you, he looked upon you and went, I like that. That is good. God looks upon his creation and loves it. God looks upon his creation and enjoys it. God looks upon his creation and I know that we have marred it and we have damaged it and we have done so much against it, and we have hurt it and harmed it, but God loves it and adores it. And you are part of his creation. The people that you live with are part of his creation. The world in which you have been placed to be its caretaker and to look after it is part of his creation. There is so much that we could say about this. I mean, the first job of the first human beings was to be caretakers, was to, to look after the world, to be placed in charge, not in a dictatorial way, but in a caretaking role of creation. And we still have that role. We still have that job. That is why it is a holy and a good thing to be able to be concerned about creation. That's why I marvel and wonder, not in a good way, at Christians who somehow or other attack the ecological movement, who attack people who want to save the planet, and who tell us that we can go and ruin the planet and do whatever we want with it. They are not doing the job that God created them for. God created them to look after the planet and to look after the world. But the other lesson to be learned from this is not just our role of caretaker, the things that we have to do, but the, the way that we look at ourselves. How does it change your view of you in the morning whenever you say, that person in the mirror is God's beautiful creation? How does it change the view of your children 
whenever you look at them and you say, they are God's beautiful creation. How does it change the view of your husband or your wife or the other people that you live with whenever you say, that person is God's beautiful creation? How does it change the view of the people you hate? Your enemies, the people who hate you. Whenever you say, you know what? They are God's beautiful creation and he loves them. We get into much more difficult territory then because how does it change your view of those who have hurt you or harmed you? Whenever you say, do you know what, even them, they are God's creation. And so how does God want me to react to them? He certainly doesn't want you to be hurt by them. He doesn't want you to be harmed by them. He doesn't want you to let them hurt you or continue to harm you. But maybe he wants you to be able to learn the difficult and hard process of forgiveness that there is. And telling those people, you might be a beautiful creation of God, but you're not going to take up space in my mind anymore because that's got to be left for room for me to experience the love of God for myself. And so I forgive you, I move you aside, and I I set you outside of my mind for this time. And you can go on to somewhere else. Sometimes forgiveness is like tidying the house. It's about making space, clearing out the junk. You are made by God. You are made to glorify him, to enjoy his presence, to know his nearness. And you are made to enjoy this beautiful creation that he has made for us. Whatever way we see it with our eyes, if we can hear it with our ears, whatever way we experience it with our bodies, whatever way there is to enjoy it. Let's forget that dour, terrible variety of Christianity you can get sometimes that, that wants to you know, move all beauty to the side, that Puritanism of the bad sort that, that didn't celebrate joy and beauty and life and love. But instead, let's look to God, the creator, and say, thank you for creating me. Thank you for making me who I am and how I am. And Lord, thank you that I can enjoy your creation. Lord, help me to do that in a way that honors you as creator. And ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close our service by singing together. This is Creation's King. It's a beautiful little song. We haven't sung this in a long while.
and in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thanks for joining with us today. I pray that you would know God's blessing upon your life. And I really sincerely pray that you would know deep down in your heart, you are his beautiful and wonderful creation. God bless you. Goodbye.